the giants of the art world. Yeah, as a matter of fact, a lot of times when we're asked about artists, who are the first two great artists that come to mind, and it's Michelangelo and Leonardo. But why? Why are they the greats? Well, as we've talked about Leonardo, he was more than just an artist. He's a mathematician, scientist, inventor. And Michelangelo, well, he never called himself an artist. He says, I am not an artist. He was a sculptor. He was even asked one time, how do you take a block of marble and pull something out of that? And his answer, it's there. I'm just freeing it. Their works were a great contribution to the arts in which we do today. And that's how we go back to them a lot. And that's why we remember them. And it's really not until about Picasso that you really start thinking about cubism. But there's so many artists in between that we just really ignore or are not really educated about. So why am I talking about these two? Well, as you know, in this series, we're working on the human anatomy. And really, a lot of this is based on these two here and what they've done. So tonight, what we're going to work on is that we are going to work on the back so that's another big part of the human anatomy and really the back is pretty much ignored a lot think about it how many pictures do you really see of just the back itself not really much unless the head is turned and then usually the body is twisted then we see the shoulder and then the triceps and the biceps but never really just the back and it tends to be a bit boring but there are so many structures in the back that we need to know about and in this episode, what we're going to work on is we're going to work on what Michelangelo and Leonardo studied. Because the back is just as important. Because there are going to be times where some of your drawings, you're going to have to know the anatomy of the back. So let's get going and uh, see if we can't turn around and learn a little something from what these two taught us. Let's go. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. Most excellent. Now we're at the back. Now we're going to... She's fascinated. Behold, one of my roller bots. When they study, they study. I mean, they get immersed. Hello? She is not even... I mean, she is totally focused on what's on here. All right. We're not going to spend so much time really going over every single bone. We did that already on the posterior, but this is basically the anterior. And behold, this is the back of the rib cage. Not much to it. You have the spinal cord, you have the lumbars, you have the, the, the vertebra, you have everything there that's set. Now, the only thing that I'm going to point out on this before we move on is that, as I said earlier, that ribs 11 and 12, which are located near the bottom here, are not connected to the front or the rest of the rib cage. And the reason they're not, as I said earlier, is because it's to be able for you to flex back this way. If that wasn't able, we would only be able to move into this position here, but yet at the same time, there's gotta be something here that protects those areas in the back. 
and you can see how the cage itself wraps around. Now, you could probably ask yourself, why aren't the bones bigger? Why is it just muscle? Well, if you just had muscle, think about this. You wouldn't have what you wouldn't have a frame, and that's exactly what the whole ribs are for, and the bone structure is to be able to have a stand up upright. Okay, enough of that, and you can see how those ribs are set up. Really, not really much we have to go through that. So let's move on. All right, let's let's take a look at this next picture and we move from the rib cage to the muscle structure like that there we go okay so as we move into the muscle structure we can see where everything is here on this the back is now moved into its position we've moved it into its position here and you can see the muscle structure of the back not as dramatic as the chest but still there's a lot that has to be learned about this here and let's take a closer look we're gonna briefly go through these so that we can get through the anatomical parts of it relatively quick all right here we go all right so we start off as you can see the back of the neck which is the sternomastoid followed by the trapezius now remember when I said about the trapezius and how it was shown here well you can see now on the back it becomes a v it's now it comes back and it's the whole back area that becomes the trapezius in that that area it's a larger muscle which actually works all along this here so when you're working on it you got to remember when you're drawing the front of it it's going to fold all the way from behind and it's going to carry out over it's not just the shoulders it goes down into the back all right let's move on uh, from there you have uh, the tendonitis floor of the trapezius. Now that part that we're talking about is this part right over here, this large area, which is, looks basically looks like a floor. And all those tendons are connected to the back part of the back and hold everything together. Let's move on. From there, we move on to the uh, acromenon process of the scapula. And you can see where that muscle is put in. And then, of course, underneath that, we have the infraspinatus, the teres major, and the teres minor. Now, the uh, infraspinatus, as you can see, is right here on the underside of those muscles. And those muscles really do a lot of pulling and pushing, contracting and releasing. The teres major, minor, they are together also working in coordination with the other larger muscle groups to pull them back and and that's the the part where you see when the men flex or when you flex you can see that ripple in the back those are those muscles contracting and pulling everything together and and bringing that strength into the back let's move on okay position of the rear margin of the serratus that is as you can see back here the back wing where we were talking about the wing muscles. Well, that's now the larger back part of that area here that you can see, which you can grab a hold of. If you stand in front of your partner, your uh, weight training partner, and you're spotting and you, <clears throat> you can feel that large muscle group, that's at all the wing that you can feel, which is all of that right in, in that area there. Okay, let's move on. Uh, we have now the lumbar triangle iliac furrow and the iliac crest which is now at the back the gluteus minimus the position of the coccyx and the gluteus maximus which are all located right down here at the bottom part of the lower back that's the part of the back that is really vulnerable where a lot of people will either misstep they lift wrong and all that pressure goes right down to that lower part of the back. Now, if you really look at it, that's really a lot of weight for the entire body to carry a lot of extra weighted load. It can <clears throat> contract and can pull a muscle, can strain your muscle, uh, can throw your back out. That's where all those injuries usually occur down in that lower part. All right, let's move on. We've got, now we move into uh, the cervical triangle, which is the lower part down in this area here. You can see that part there that those muscle groups all tie in together and they anchor to part of where the gluteus maximus goes into. Those large muscle groups are all tied in together. Next part here that we're looking at 
is called the external obliques, the flank pad, which we went over, <coughs> uh, psychospinatus, which is exposed. That part there, right here, is the underlying muscle that goes below. That's another layer of muscle. Remember we are talking about layers of muscle? Well, when we're drawing, it's not really important, but to understand where it is, is good to know, just so that we know what we're drawing. But that part of that muscle is underlaying another part of that muscle, which supports. Those are, those are starting to get into the core muscles. And um, really, athletics in the last 10, 15, 20 years have really been focusing on core muscle groups. Now, gymnasts have been doing that a lot, but it's been in the forefront a lot more so than it has been in the past. Okay, uh, from there, we move into the thoracic vertebra, which is the, uh, the uh, seventh vertebra, latissimus dorsi, position of the lower angular scapula, spinatus ligament, deltoid, spine of the scapula, thoracic vertebra run, one um, vertebra posthumus cervical eight. Now that's the part where we start getting into areas where you have a lot of vehicle accidents, motorcycle accidents, and they break that part of the neck. When you get up into the lower upper area, breaking that part, instant death because it shuts everything down. And you hear about quadriplegics, paraplegics, they usually break in that area and then the lower part of the body does not work any longer. That's the area that they're really talking about. And so then finally we have the nutch of uh, neutral ligament and that's the part which is right back, as you can see, back up in this area here. Okay, so that basically covers everything that you can see here that we have on the back. Now, as you can see, I have here, they're not marked, but as I was showing you, and we do close-ups on that, I was showing you the, the mark so you can see what it looks like without any kind of labeling. And then as we got in closer, when I showed you, you could see the labeling there on that. And I'll put that up there for you so you can take a look at it and see how that works really well. Okay, so let's take a little break here. And then from this point, we're gonna start practicing on working on the back and put a little more detail into what we have. And then that's going to end this uh, segment. And then next week, we're going to be working on the arms themselves. Uh, we'll then go down to the legs. We'll put all those together, which will be in the advanced, which we'll start working on. But at that point, we're going to have the advanced for assembling the body, doing some foreshortening. Uh, but again, as I said, we will be doing the female figure on Patreon, and we'll take it from there. All right. Let's head out. Totally get it. You can stay there. That's fine. That, that's okay. Yeah. The, yeah. You just want to study. Yeah. We're on. Hi. Yeah. Okay, so for those of you who really don't know what rollerbots are, these are my characters. Now, one of the things you have to understand is uh, they have a tendency to study, but when they focus, they don't say a word. They just take everything in. Sometimes that can be a little intimidating, but trust me, they're pretty uh, <coughs> mellow, right? She just freezes, I'm telling you she's just focused. All right, let's uh, get going on uh, this here, the back. All right, so this is the back. And you can see it's rather large. So what we're going to do here is we're going to work on developing this up and getting it all set up. So let's work on this one and take a look at this drawing and we're going to kind of go through again. This is through time lapse. What I want you to get out of this is to see the style and form of what we're doing. Notice that what I'm working on as I start to develop this back, it's just molded. I'm working on blocks of light and shadow. If you go back to what we worked on at the very beginning, which is remember the cylinder 
or I should say the sphere, the, the cube, and the uh, cone, and how we work on light and shadow. Well, this here is what we're going to be working on on this back here. So take a look at this photograph, and now let's take a look at the drawing itself. Okay, so as we're looking through this here, we can see how the back is done. And again, just to let you know, we are on time-lapse cameras. So don't try to push this and make it look like you're trying to rush through this. Take your time. All right, so first we're gonna start off with just putting everything in and lining the back in. You can see how the back is lined up now and we've got the crossbar as I call it and really there isn't anything else called to it. You have the vertical line which is the spine and the line here in the back which is the shoulders themselves. Yeah, that's what they are, the shoulders. So that's where we're going to place everything. All right, let's move on. Okay, now we get everything lined in and we're just setting everything up. Now, next art is the half tone. Now notice what I've done is I've just blocked in color. That's it. It's just changing that color. Now here's what I want you to do when you're looking at it. Compare that this drawing here to that drawing here of the back. Let's set them up here side by side. All right, just like this. Notice that you have the back itself and compare that to the drawing. All I'm doing is looking at the light and shadow. Look at the light and shadow on the back itself. Don't look at lines, don't look at anything else, look at the blocks of shade, the tonality. This is going to help you to be able to look at how things are blocked up. All right, let's move on. Okay, so we have the back set up. It's starting to, we're blurring out those lines and now we're blocking in the half tones. And those half tones, I should say, maybe not so much half tones, but you can see now we have, well, we have the paper, which is white. We have the halftone, which is the uh, the back itself. But we'll call those midtones in between the white and the black. They're not quite, but you have these several different degrees of midtones. And so this is what we're working on. You have the gray, which is the ground part of the, the foundation of the back. Then I start adding a little more darker shade. Okay, let's move on. All right, so now we've got the back pulling out and we can start seeing some of the shadows starting to pull out. What I'm also doing now is I'm also blending out those lines and kind of diffusing the edges. Okay, so now I'm starting to pull in some of those darker areas and really starting to make those uh, areas of the back look more pronounced. All right, let's take a look at that spine now. As you can see now, that spine is starting to look a lot like the drawing itself, or actually like the model itself. The model has that drawing there. You can see it. You can see the drawing and the back starting to look familiar with that. That's because I'm starting to pick up some of the darker areas there. Okay, let's move on. All right, so we've got the back now. We're starting to build up some of those areas. Now let's start going into those darker, deeper areas, and you can see those shadows that are starting to pull out. All right. Let's just take a look at the drawing itself. You can see this here. When you look at this drawing, you can start seeing that when you start adding those layers in, the muscular structure of the back starts to come out. Now, backs are rather hard to do because unless the person is flexing what we're gonna do on the next one, there isn't really much denotation, unlike the pecs, the abs, uh, the semi-lunar line that you have around the, the, the um, the, the ab area, you have the obliques, you have all those areas define that. And if you really look at it, that, that's a lot, that is really the showpiece of the human body for the front. But the back, eh, not really much excitement there unless it flexes. And this is actually, you're going to find that with the legs too, that legs don't have much definition and you have to pull those definitions out to make it look more dramatic. And that's what we're seeing in the back. All right, let's move on. All right, so we start building up some of those shadows and we start defining more of the shadows coming into the back. We start broadening the back part of that because it's, this model has a larger back. Okay, now let's kick in those highlights. Once I put in those highlights, you can see how these highlights here are starting to be more pronounced. And you can see now that really makes that back pop out. Now remember what I talked about, never, never, never 
go with just white. You only want to use white for these absolute white highlights. And you can see here, I haven't used absolute white. It's kind of a gray. It's not the full spectrum of white. And you're going to see how that works out a little bit later. All right, let's move on. Okay, so now we put in the, the, uh, the black background. And now we start diffusing the edges and start blending them out. So again, we don't have that stencil look. You want to diffuse the edges so it looks like it's immersing or coming out of the darkness. Is that a song coming out of the... Forget it. Just go on. Okay, go. You can see now the darker areas start popping out. And now that back, you can really start seeing those muscular structures coming out. And if we put in more work into that back, we can start becoming, it can start becoming more and more detailed. But for now, this is what we look like. And compared to the back that we have of the model, that's pretty close to what we're looking at there. Keep in mind though, this is just a study. If you go further, if you go even in more detail, you can pick out more muscular areas of the back itself. And we're gonna show you some of that in the advanced um, uh, episode of anatomy of the human body. And you'll be able to see some of those things that we're, we're gonna be working with. Okay, so let's take the next step. And the next part we're gonna work on is we're gonna be working on the back flexed. And you'll see the difference between that. All right, shall we get started? Did you get enough of that? All right, let's go work on that one. Let's go. <laughs> Well now, it appears that my friends here wish to honor some of our greatest maestros in the music world by impersonating some of their greatest works. Ah yes, I will portray Franz Liszt. I'll be Franz Joseph Hayden. I'll be the incredible Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. I'll be Johannes Brahms. I would love to join your group. I'll get my wig and I'll be Bach. Hmm, is he referring to the verb or noun? Okay, I think I have an idea what he means. However, is the idea what he wants to be? Buck, 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 buck. Is he coming? Is he going? Does he know? Is he one of us? Wait, are we like him? Good heavens. He stands as high as an alto, voice like a bass. I wonder what his compositions is like. Oh, how cute is he? He's not sure what words to use. Hmm, maybe I should correct him. Um, no, on sweetheart, you're not gonna correct him. Okay, then you correct him. Nope, I'm not going to correct him either. But why not? Because we are cute, small and round, and I plan for us to stay that way. Are you sure? Never mind. Okay, we're starting now on the next part of the back, and we're going to walk through you on how this is flexed. Now, Notice that before we had the back all flexed out. Look at this one now. This back here is now pulled and the muscles are now contracted. They're constricted. They're pulling and they've tightened up. And so now we're going to take a look and now we're going to change the back on this. Now remember, we're not working on the arms. We're just focusing on the back. Let's move on. Let's take a look at what we got here. Let's go. Okay, as before. We started off with just the sketching is all we're going to do. We're going to start lining everything in. But now what we're doing is we're now looking at more of the flex of the back. We're now starting to show the predominance of the muscles. And again, really not much to the back. We can see um, when would you really be showing the back? Well, you might show it when you're showing a person in front, the person in the back getting ready to lunge. For instance, like this. I know I'm wearing my suit, so you really can't see much of anything on the back, but you might have the person in front, two people fighting, anime, or even when you're working on something that you're going to show the person in front, the person with your back flexed, no shirt on, gladiators, etc., etc. So you're going to have to know and make that exciting. You want it to look, look attractive. So you're going to have to understand where the muscular structures work. In the 1970s, really quick, there was a 
album that came out, and I wish I could have found it. I, I, I wanted to, to show it. And you could tell whoever illustrated did not understand anything about the back, and the muscles did not even look correct at all. So, again, study your anatomy. Let's move on. All right. So now we're laying in some of the darks. Now, I've taken a slightly different approach. I am just pretty much going freely on this, and now I'm looking at shape. I'm looking at, I'm letting myself be free. And the reason I'm doing it, this is to kind of encourage you just to be free. Let yourself fly. Just let yourself go with this. And you can see on this one here, I'm not showing as much defined line drawing. I'm mostly looking darks and shadows. I'm using a lot of big patches. And that's what I want to encourage you to do that. Again, the secret here, stay loose. The looser you can be, eventually your work will get tighter and tighter. It sounds like a contradiction in terms, and I wish, oh, how I wish when I was in school they would have taught this to me. And I'm referring to high school. I didn't learn about this until I was in college. But just blocks of darks and lights. That's all you want to do. And be loose. Because that's what's going to make your image look effortless. And it's going to look really well. Okay, move on. Okay, so now we have the highlights coming in. And now look, just by just adding those few highlights already, you can see those muscles starting to develop and form and create itself. And they're starting to really move out and they're really starting to showing lights and shadows and depths. You can see those. Look at how they're starting to come out. Okay, let's move on and go on to the next step. Okay. So we're now starting to add the darker shadows into the back. And now I'm going to stop it here by looking at this here. Look at how this now is just, with just a few darks, you can really see those muscles starting to pull forward. Again, all we're doing is light, shadows, midtones, halftones, highlights. That's all you're working with. Again, this is time lapse. So slow yourself down and build, erase, redraw, draw again, redraw. That's what drawing is all about. It's about drawing, redrawing, redrawing, redraw again, start over, redraw, do it over again, and save these drawings. Let's go on. As you start adding more highlights into the back, you start adding more darks to the back, you can see the muscular structure, you can see how the back of the scapula is tidying together, and how they're starting to pull in. Now we've got even dark, uh, lighter highlights, and now we add the background, and again, once we fade, uh, the edges around the dark side of the back, we can see those highlights popping up, and we can now see the definition between the lights and the darks. And voila, look at the two backs here as compared. Once again, you can see the generalities between the two, they look similar to each other, they have that same type of look to each other, and that's what you're shooting for. If you can make the back with everything anatomically correct and yet make it look painterly or or a loose drawing you are on the road to success that's where you want to head don't try to make it look like it's photorealistic we're going to get to that point where you can and, well let's put it this way you could do that now by doing tracings and then overlays and and do all that there's nothing wrong with that you can do that but as you probably did the tracing of the face uh, remember when we did that tracing of Ella, of the half tone on the face, it wasn't as easy as it seemed? It's the same thing here. You can do a trace on this, wouldn't be cheating, but once you start working on those lights and shadows, it starts to get a little more complicated. As a matter of fact, I'll challenge you, do it, do it, try it. Try doing this on a trace like we did with the portrait of Ella, and you'll find that it gets to be a bit more challenging. Again, it's not cheating, it's just a technique that you're using in itself. And you could probably use this model, or you can find models on Google, and you can find them on Pinterest, models of the back, and try working on those. Okay, so we've covered everything here. We've covered the back itself. So far, we've covered the chest. We've covered the back. Next week, we're covering the arms. So we're going to be working on the bicep, tricep. Uh, not sure if we're going to split that up. We may... Probably not. Not sure yet, but either or we are working on the arm for next week, but uh, we'll see if we're going to split those up uh, and just work on those. If not, it'll be all in one 
and then from there we go to the leg. And then after that, we're gonna put it all together on the advanced drawing. Okay, so from myself and uh, AJ3, she's in her uh, sports uniform. We'll go into that later, but don't even know about that. May the Lord be with you. You have a wonderful, wonderful day and have a wonderful week. And keep practicing, keep working at this, keep diligently working. It's, it's tough, it takes a lot of work. But again, this is not a course where you're gonna find something that's easy. It takes part in your uh, effort to get in there to work and practice hard. Take care and we will see you next week on the next episode of Artifacts. How did you, was that one good? Did you like that one? Yeah, I thought it was pretty good too. Bum, bum, bum.